Welcome to InsideTheHype.tv podcast, the show that takes you into the world of peace. I'm Dr. Umberto Bon Cristiani. In today's episode, I talk with Mr. Kevin Easton, president of the Palm Beach County Beekeepers Association. We discuss how he entered into the beekeeping world and the exciting upcoming event, the South Florida Honeybee Expo on February 16 to 17. And I hope you enjoy it. Kevin, finally we're having, we're making this. How are you today? I am doing just fine here. Um, both are doing re- real well here. Well, how, how is the weather? I think you're going to uh, be well, jealous. Yeah, uh, yes, the weather is perfect here right now. We are getting some little sprinkles here and there, but uh, I've been painting all day. Uh, I haven't got a chance to play with the bees because it's been raining, but uh, life is good right now. We're uh, uh, it is super. On. It's super cold here, so I'm I'm glad a lot of my followers are gonna be jealous of you right there in South Florida enjoying the good weather. Kevin, I want to start this conversation by asking you, it's a kind of uh how do you get into bees? You know, people are always curious about the people, how they get into bees, uh, what's their story? Well, that one's uh, pretty easy here. I think in 2009, I had some bees move into my stopper right outside my door here. Uh, and I was uh, just getting ready to retire. So I watched the bees for a little bit. And finally, uh, my friend said, oh, you got bees over there. We're not coming over any- to your house anymore because we're afraid. And I said, well, I uh, got this guy named Sonny. He was a live bee removal expert. And uh, I watched him do it. And I said, boy, I hate to lose these bees. I says, maybe uh uh, I'd like to keep them if possible. And he says, well, I've got a box. I'll put the box over there. He says, I can't guarantee it because, you know, you're supposed to move the bees two feet or two miles, but we moved them probably about 15 feet and uh, put some brush around them and stuff. And I'll be darned if they stayed. So I ended up being a beekeeper and I joined uh, Palm Beach County Beekeepers uh, to learn a little bit more about it. And uh, the next year, I'll be darned, I had a swarm up in the tree right above that uh, hive. So I ended up catching that swarm, and I was on my way to becoming a full-fledged beekeeper and a bee removal person. Wow. So the bees came to you then. and Yes, they did. They came to you, and they chose you to become a beekeeper, and I was all involved in all kinds of aspects of beekeeping, including being the president of a, a very big and active association, if I remember correctly. I've been there giving a talk. You guys are really good real good and organized and have very strong meetings can you tell tell me a little bit more about the the beekeeping association oh uh yeah i started uh like i say back in 2009 i worked my my way up i ended up being the secretary for a year or so then the vice president uh ended up being the president in 2015 right after the uh we had the fsba uh uh state uh, like expo that we had here and uh I was the uh, president for 2015, 16, and 17. I've been the vice president ever since. Uh, this is my uh, uh, this is my calling here, I guess. The bees have found me, and uh, I volunteered to be the president uh, again this year. Uh, we got some exciting things going on, like the expo, uh, the fair, and uh, I'm like uh, I just love the outreach programs. I try to do as many as I can. Um, I don't know if you know, I'm a master beekeeper here. Graduated from the you know, University of Gainesville here in Florida, U of F. And uh, like I say, we're just, uh, uh, the club is doing great. We've got a new uh, board here and uh, we're excited. I'm, I'm really glad to have all these people here that are involved. Uh, the club is doing fantastic. We just had 80 people here from the, uh, that we picked up probably about 40 from the South Florida Fair that wanted to come and see what we were doing in our club. Uh, we had our state inspector there, Angie Thule, and she went over the regulations. And then we talked about uh, hives and different things like that, that the people might want to be interested in starting. Uh, we're really growing. Uh, it's a, it's just something. I'm also uh, a member of the Chautauqua County Beekeepers, so uh, I get a little wow. t- touch of the north and the south here. Okay, I've got a couple of hives up there, and hopefully they're going to survive. Last year they did. Uh, we'll see how it all goes here, but uh, I just love the bees and love to be involved. And getting expanding. Can, can you tell me a little bit of the history of the the, the association? You know, the, the people from the past. How how you know. The people get together and decide. Okay, let's have an association here. Do you do you know a little bit of the history of this whole? I I sure do. Yes, uh, that's uh, we, uh, her name was Uta. I believe it was Uta Hartman that started this thing here. And this was uh, we we're actually ce- celebrating our fiftieth anniversary this year. So uh, we started in nineteen seventy four, and uh, this is a big 
anniversary year for us. So we're hoping to uh, highlight that. Uh, I know that uh, there was a few uh, presidents before me. Al Salbeck was one. I'm sure any viewers have heard of him. We've had uh, Brendan Horn, uh, Leonard Kahn, uh, Lee Wisnowski, uh, Eric Baxter. These are all different presidents that we've had over the years. Um, we're just trying to uh, keep this club going here. And uh, it's uh, it's pretty exciting to be uh, leading the team here into this expo here. This is our second expo that we've had. Uh, the first one we had just before Hurricane Ian almost uh, took us out. I'm sure it took a lot of beekeepers out. We're sorry, we're sorry about that. But uh, that hurricane gave me the white hairs that I have today here because we had uh, we had everybody flying in, and that hurricane just turned and went up the West Coast. It didn't come across and, and get us. So we were very lucky about that. Uh, this second expo should be just uh, even twice as good. Well, good to hear that. So how, how many people do you, you have in the association today? Well, right now, I think we're uh, pushing 150 paid members. There's a lot of people that want to join. And, uh, you know, we have this little problem that uh, the people, after they stay in our club for about five or six years or so, it seems like they attrition out because they've learned what they could and or they've gotten busy other lives and beekeeping's too hard, maybe. I'm not sure what it is. You know, it's a, it's not the easiest life to, uh, you know, be a beekeeper. And, uh, you know, <laughs> you just... Uh, you know, you got to go with it and uh, enjoy it. If not, then, you know, you probably will, you know, only make it three or four years if that, you know. I know. I know. It, it is hard at the beginning to to yeah. learn and to keep it consistent. And it's not for everybody, right? To, to be keeping yeah. is not for everybody. No. And we need more metros all the time. We're looking for people to come out and help us. Uh, you know, it's like, say, it's, you know, you got to help the other people so that they don't uh, fail and then give up, you know, because, Everybody fails a little bit when you're beekeeping, you know. <laughs> you, you I, I still fail. <laughs> so, yeah, it just happens, you know. So, you know, we uh, we do what we can do to try and teach the people the right way to do things, and uh, we're constantly learning, you know. That's why yeah. we have this expo, you know. It's like we want to bring in the, the brightest and uh, the newest people that uh, know what's going on. So, Talking about the expo, we have what's the name of the expo, when it's going to happen, and how people can get in. It's the South Florida Honeybee Expo. And there my go. Right there. Uh, there you go. go. See that? That's that. You can have one of these shirts too if you attend. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> and then we have the 50th yeah. anniversary. I don't know if you can see that. Right there. Yeah, 50 years. Yeah, I can see it. First, boy, I'll tell you. Well, uh, but this expo, uh, I don't. Uh, you can go on uh, online and actually check out all the different speakers that we have. Uh, I don't have that information. I could probably pull it up, but. Uh, I'm not that computer savvy here. I don't want to. Don't worry about it. I will. I will put. I will leave everything that we're going to talk about here in the link in the description of this video, so everybody can have the links, so they can click and find out exactly what's happening and where to go and all the information. But yeah. tell how how people got organized. Why you have a South uh, uh, Florida Honeybee Expo? Why? How the idea come up and and why? Well, uh, we've always uh, wanted, we've had uh, expo, or not expos, but they're like workshops and training sessions here before. I remember when I started, I think Jim Chapman, one of our old presidents, had a nice little thing going on over at the Pine Jog. Uh, education is key to learning. And uh, uh, we do go to these uh, Gainesville events here when uh, University of Florida has them. But during COVID, those things kind of dropped by the wayside and we were everybody's thirsty nobody wanted to drive up to Gainesville so we said why not have an expo here we've got a lot of people that want to learn and so that's what uh you know we kind of put this thing together so that uh we could get more better speakers and learn about this stuff and uh people didn't have to travel travel all the way to Gans Gainesville just to uh you know go to go to classes I see that makes a make a lot of sense let me let me share my screen here just one second because I can, and you can guide me a little bit with the information here. Here we go. Sure. So I'm here we are. In, let me make it bigger here. Here we go. So, so where is going to be? Palm Beach County Beekeeper Association, February yes. 16 to 17 of 2024. That's going to be at the Palm Beach State College on PGA Boulevard. Okay. Uh, what a nice facility here. Last year we had it at the Loxahatchee campus, but they're rebuilding that. So uh, we've got the opportunity to do it here at the PGA campus. Oh, here you go. 
3160 PGA Boulevard, Palm Beach Gardens. Mm -hmm. All right. It's a nice place, if I remember. Oh, it's a beautiful place, it's yeah. It's a beautiful place. Uh, when I was at the University of Florida traveling every single day, almost all over Florida, visiting beekeepers, I think I, I think I passed through this this area and it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, Kevin, tell me about the, the tickets here. There is a $45 to $200. What's the differences here? You, well, we have uh, we have different. Uh, you'll have to look at the, the different prices, but we have uh, a meet and greet that's uh, forty five dollars on uh, that Friday, where the speakers will be there, and you can talk to them. And we're going to have uh, some uh, hors d'oeuvres and things like that. Uh, but the, uh, we actually just opened up a one uh, day ticket price today. Here we go. Uh, I didn't yep. look at that. Uh, I know that Paula is is usually taking care of that. I'm the president. I've got so many other. <laughs> I know, yeah. Yeah. but so I mean, sure all right here in front of us, yeah. So we can, uh, I think that's what we discussed was $125. And then, uh, if you wanted to attend that uh, Friday night, it would be 40, $45 more for the uh, the meet and greet. But, uh, uh, we have a lot of speakers there. I'm sure you'll find uh, pull them up later, but, uh, definitely worth, uh, uh, the money for sure. Okay. So, yeah, there is lots of options here for everybody with different time and ways to to enjoy the event let me close this okay interesting i am curious i if i had the time i for sure i would be there but i i didn't know this on time actually if if i knew that before i could schedule and prepare myself better but i i have plans already okay all happens, you know? we're all busy people uh like i say we were we were kind of uh, trying to find a new time to do it because uh, hurricane season just is not the best time and people can't get away. But uh, uh, even right now, it seems like, uh, you know, people are people are always busy. But we hope that uh, everyone joins us for this because uh, it should be an exciting event. Yes, I, I, I'm just right now seeing who is going to be there. So there is a lot of folks here. A lot of them, I know them very well. John's going to be there. Oh, I'm curious about his work. All right. So we have a lot of folks. Randy Oliver is going to be there. Juliana Rangel, very good researcher in Texas AMN. Kay Moreno is also going to be there. Nathan from Dela, from the vaccine company as well. Frank Brinkovich from USDA. Uh, Brandon Stanford good friend of mine, Al Salapak, also good friend of mine. Yeah, it's gonna, you have a full house. Uh, yeah, some, eight uh, Western Bell. Yeah, very, very selective gr group of people you have here. I'm sure it's going to be a great event. I'm sure it's going to be just awesome here. I can't wait to, uh, to get it going on the 16th there. We, it should be uh, exciting out there. We just cleaned up the apiary. Uh, We've got an apiary location, and uh, we're going to move the bees in here next week. And, uh, yes, this is a hands-on gig for a lot of people. That uh, There's also that uh, one track. It's uh, products of the hive or whatever where, you know, you don't have to, you know, just, uh, you know, be a beekeeper. You can just figure out how to get yourself some wax or this and uh, be a beekeeper and use those byproducts to uh, make yourself a little side business. I know. That's something that I'm sure a lot of people are, are going to enjoy, you know, because not everybody wants to be a beekeeper, but uh, they sure like the products of the hive. I'm sure. So it's going to have companies there too, right? So it's a full expo. We have uh, companies selling all kinds of things. So yes, people... We have vendors coming in from all over. Uh, we can always use more vendors. Get a hold of us. Uh, we still got room, but uh, I mean, it won't be as big as the... Uh, 3,000 uh, different vendors, I guess, or the 3,000 people up there at Cayman Reynolds event, but uh, maybe someday we'll get half that far. Here know. we go. Here we so go. Florida, and the wintertime is a, a nice place to be, you know. That's true. That's true. Well, I enjoyed this, so I'm going to promote this. Every time we have a new B Expo, uh, I'll be happy to to promote. Uh, if, if anybody knows, you know, any kind of meetings, B meetings, and in one one might help to promote it, please give me, send me an email. I will be happy to do that. Kevin, let's talk a little bit more about things that you see in the south of Florida regarding beekeeping that got get your attention. What people, 
what the philosophy of beekeeping that people in the south of Florida like the most in your, you know, you're involved with a lot of beekeepers there. You, you know, in the beekeeping world, we have so many different kind of styles and philosophies. In your opinion, what's the dominance about philosophy of beekeeping there in South, Flo uh, South Florida? Well, everybody uh, gets to do it 24-7 around here, uh, 365 days a year, pretty much. Uh, the winter time, of course, we, we may have to feed the bees a little bit if you don't have a strong colony. But uh, uh, everybody that I know, uh, they, everybody just varies. It's like uh, a lot of people carry Langstroth. A lot of people like the, the Sam Comfort boxes. Uh, you know, it's, it's very it's very well divided. It, there yes, is no yes. one single like uh, we the south of Florida. We have much more the people that do not treat bees or 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 it's everything equal there. You can find everything. Uh, yeah, well, uh, people are starting to treat their bees a little bit more because they understand the importance of, uh, you know, this varroa destructor here that's, uh, you know, uh, vectoring all kinds of viruses to everybody, you know, to all the other uh, beekeepers in their hives. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it is a problem that's ongoing. We wish we could uh, figure that out there. I mean, Sam Ramsey, he did a good job of figuring out it was from the fat, but now we got to figure out what to put in that fat so that we can kill that varroa destructor without killing the bee. That's one way to do, but I just I just recorded another episode of my podcast, a uh, researcher in Canada showing that the fat body only occurs when the when the bees are adult bees. If the varroa mite feeds on the pupa, they they feed on hemolymph a lot. Gotcha. So we are learning a lot of new things about that. So great. Hey, that's great. Yes, more research is definitely needed. We could use the University of Florida to help us with more research all the time. You know, that's one thing I know our club uh, stood behind and we tried to get that B lab going and we, uh, uh, we work very hard donating a lot of money to get that thing going. It's uh, I'm excited to have it going, but we sure could use the state to kick in a bunch more money to uh, help us out uh, with more research projects. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure the Florida lab uh, appreciate all the efforts of all the beekeepers in Florida. That was a fantastic action of the whole community to to help to build a, a five point something million dollars facility for research and it, i think that happens because of the mentality of floridians uh, regarding how important honeybee research uh, research is and so how, how how involved were you in, in that aspect you know you, well, like you, I say, we had uh, we had workshops. I know we had Jennifer Holmes. Uh, she donated her whole uh, uh, one fund meeting when she came in and uh, you know instructed us on how to make mead in one time. So that was, uh, you know, we actually have donated a lot of money over the years to, uh, to the Bee Lab, and uh, we just, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a great thing. We just need to get a, uh, more funding. It's, it's actually what we need. So, but uh, the Bee College, it's a great place to have the Bee College. It's just that it's so far away. Um, but I, I do attend them, but it's, it's just not every time now. And again, it's, uh, you know, it's a great place to learn. It is a six hours drive from where you uh, are? Probably, yeah, probably about five hours or so. But yeah, it's, it's a, it's a pretty good little drive. Yeah. I, I, I know the bunch of times, but I, again, it's, uh, you know, uh, I always look forward to the next one. Hope I have the time because everybody's always busy. You know, that's, the, I know if we had a home, I'd fly up there and uh, do every one of them because I just, uh, you know, love to learn that kind of thing, you know. So. Kevin, do you have any message for the people at home that, you know, that is considering to attend the 2024 Honeybee Expo in Palm Beach County Beekeeper Association? If you have any message, now is the time. Get your tickets now, folks. I hope it sells out real soon, but uh, uh, I'd love to see you there. So with the rest of the board, actually, uh, I want to thank all the volunteers on the board because this is uh, something that, uh, you know, it doesn't just happen overnight. We've been planning this for over a year since the last expo. And uh, guys like Vitaly Stashenko, who got our, uh, got us set up with the campus, and uh, Paula Messer, my vice president, that, that does all the PR and stuff like that. Uh, it's just a huge undertaking. But, uh, again, I think it's necessary for, you know, to teach the people uh, and get the people together because uh, we need more beekeepers uh I think, you know, the average age of the beekeeper is 52 years old. And uh, if you, uh, we need to get some more young blood in there. And if not, uh, like I say, well, uh, people, yeah. you know. I know. Who knows what's going to happen? I, I saw those statistics. Yeah, the population of the beekeepers in U.S. is 
is in the older side and we need we need to replace yeah oh yes you are our speaker here next month and we're looking forward oh, to having you down we forgot about that I've... don't forget don't forget about oh, yeah, that yeah. i'm That's sure paul will remind you but uh yes you are our, you are definitely our speaker next month yeah I wish you could come down for the uh expo but again uh hopefully we'll be doing this again here uh so i can't i can't make the expo but in march 1st i'm going to be there giving a very interesting talk about the immunity of honeybees against viruses. So I think we're going to learn a lot of tricks, how those viruses can find their way around and messed up with the immunity of honeybees and how the bees protect themselves also against viruses. I think it's going to be an interesting lesson to everybody and it's going to be March 1st. It's going to be a great time there too as well. We're looking forward to having you. Uh, if I could just give a shout out to all the South Florida Fair volunteers that actually went out there and worked it. Uh, it's a big undertaking. It's 17 days of trying to schedule volunteers and, and with the traffic and uh, all the other concerns that we have out there. Uh, we did a great job. Again, it was all about the outreach. We reached, I don't know how many thousands of people and showed them our bees and talked about what it, what it takes to be a beekeeper. And we talked about the expo. Again, it's a great event, uh, you know, for, for a learning and uh, those volunteers deserve to be appreciated. I'm sure they are. All right, Kevin, it was Thank a pleasure you. to meet you. It's going to be a pleasure to be there. And yeah, that was fun. And I see, I see you soon. See you soon on yeah. March 1st. Yeah, exactly. Thank you again. Have a great yeah. day. You too. Bye -bye.